George Soros is one of the most successful hedge fund managers of all time, period. He has a net worth of over $8.6 billion, which puts him in the top 100 of richest people globally. In 1992, he shorted the British pound and made a billion dollar profit. Since then, he's known as the man who broke the Bank of England. He's the founder of Soros Fund Management, which is now a family office. But before that, it was one of the most successful hedge funds globally. His fund averaged an annual return of 20% over more than 40 years. In this video, we will reveal his portfolio at Soros Fund Management. We will break down his largest positions and I will tell you a little bit about each investment. This video is packed with information. Let's go. What's up everyone, this is FU Academy, your channel for financial education and on this channel I share lifestyle, investing style and educational videos just like this one. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. So let's see what Soros portfolio is about. I actually got this data from hedgefollow.com, I will leave a link in the description below. The largest investment of Soros portfolio is Rivian Automotive, making up a whopping 30.4% of its total portfolio. Rivian is the second most valuable EV car maker globally right after Tesla. They are known for their SUVs R1T and R1S, which start at around $70,000. The company IPO'd in November last year in their latest annual report from 2020. They reported $0 of revenues, but this year they produced over 1,000 cars, of which 900 20 was sold and delivered. Just as a comparison, Tesla, the number one EV car maker, sold over 930,000 cars last year, so thousand times more than Rivian. The company currently has a market cap of $58 billion, which is massive for a company that sold less than 1,000 cars last year. They have no PE ratio because they don't have profits or revenues yet, and they also have no dividend yield. Soros added Rivian to his portfolio between IPO in November and year end, so at relatively high valuations. Since then, the stock price dropped by over 30%. It looks like this investment hasn't fully paid off yet. For me, investing in EV car builders early on is risky. Take Tesla, for example. Their stock price didn't do much from 2013 to 2019, and only then did it kick off. In position number two, we have Liberty Broadband. It makes up 7.7% of Soros' total portfolio. Liberty Broadband is one of the largest cable providers in the US. They own 26% of cable operator Charter Communications and 100% of internet providers GCI and Skyhook. In 2020, Liberty Broadband made over $50 billion in revenues, up 240% year over year, driven by the acquisition of GCI. 66% of those revenues came from GCI and 30 34% from Skyhook. Liberty Broadband makes 96% of their revenues in the US and only 4% outside the US. It currently has a market cap of $26 billion, a PE ratio of 45 and no dividend yield. Investing in cable and internet providers is a bit of a 5G play. Soros bought his first stake in Liberty Broadband back in Q2 2016 when they were trading at a discount. And since then, the stock has already gone up by over 150%. In position number three, we have DR Horton. It makes up 5.8% of Soros' total portfolio. DR Horton is the largest home builder in the US. Last year, they closed over 71,000 transactions. The company builds homes and also sells both new and old homes through one of their four brands, DR Horton, Express, Emerald, and Freedom. Last year, the company made over $27 billion in revenues, up 37% year over year. 68% of those revenues came from their brand DR Horton, 27% from Express, 3% from Freedom and 2% from Emerald. They make all of their revenues in the US. It currently has a market cap of $29 billion, a PE ratio of only 6.7 and a dividend yield of 1.08%. DR Horton is a beneficiary of a real estate boom. The median house price in the US has almost doubled in the last 10 years. Just a few weeks ago, they actually hit $400,000 for the first time ever. And even better, Goldman Sachs predicts that real estate could go up another 16% this year. 
In position number four, we have IHS Market. It makes up 5.8% of Soros total portfolio. IHS provides information research and analytics services. So the company essentially processes data in a way that they can be used by their customers for strategic decisions. The company is focused on three key industries, financial services, energy, and automotive. Key competitors are Gartner, Thomson Reuters, Bloomberg, and FactSet. In 2020, IHS made over $4 billion in revenues, down 3% year over year. 42% of those revenues were generated from their financial services segment, 27% from transportation, so their automotive segment, 20% from resources, so their energy segment, and 11% from consolidated markets and solutions. It currently has a market cap of $42 billion, a PE ratio of 35, and a dividend yield of 0.74%. There is increasing demand for data to guide companies in business decisions. IHS is also in the process of merging with S&P Global, which could unlock more shareholder value. Overall, an interesting position. In position number five, we have Amazon. It makes up 3.7% of Soros' total portfolio. Amazon is best known for its e-commerce business, but it also produces its own hardware products like Echo and Alexa devices, Fire TV, or the Kindle. It also offers a video streaming service through Amazon Prime Video. On top of that, Amazon is the biggest player in cloud computing globally through its AWS arm. In 2017, Amazon bought Whole Foods, which increased their market share in physical retail. In 2020, Amazon made over $386 billion in revenues. Amazon makes 60% of their revenues from their North American business, 27% from their international business, and 13% from their AWS services. And although AWS only accounts for 13% of the total revenue, it accounts for over half of the operating income, which gives you a rough idea how profitable Amazon's AWS business really is. It currently has a market cap of $1.5 trillion, a PE ratio of 47, and no dividend yield because Amazon doesn't pay dividends. Amazon has recently come under pressure like many other tech stocks, but their cloud service AWS is the market leader and an absolute profit machine. And its e-commerce business is one of the largest in the world, which makes it incredibly hard for competitors to break in. On top of that, Amazon keeps finding new growth drivers like smart homes, healthcare, and many more. In position number six, we have Aramark. It makes up 2.9% of Soros' total portfolio. Aramark is a global hospitality company that focuses on three areas, food, facilities, and uniforms. The company provides food, drinks, facility, and housekeeping services to schools, healthcare facilities, correctional institutions, and sports venues. The uniform segment rents, delivers, and cleans specialized uniforms. Last year, Aramark made over $12 billion in revenues, down 5% year over year. 56% of those revenues were generated from their US food and support service segment, 24% from their international segment, and 20% from their uniform segment. It currently has a market cap of $9 billion, a PE ratio of whopping 292, and a dividend yield of 1.16%. For me, this isn't the most exciting stock, especially at this price point. Also, in terms of stock market performance, Aramark hasn't really gone anywhere in the last five years. The top six positions alone make up a whopping 56% of the total portfolio. From number 7 to 15, the holdings are becoming smaller and smaller, but there are still some very interesting positions here. Let's quickly go through them. On position number 7, you have speech recognition and AI software company Nuance Communications with 2.3%. In position number 8, you have healthcare company Cerner with 1.6%. At number 9, you will find Google's holding company Alphabet with 1.6%. In position number 10, you have Bowling Center Operator Bolero with 1.3%. Number 11 is the iShares iBox Dollar Investment Grade Corporate Bond ETF, which makes up 1.1% of the total portfolio. This ETF invests in investment grade US corporate bonds. In position number 12, you have Proterra, which designs and builds electric buses and electric charging systems with 1%. And number 13, you will find a REIT MGM Growth Properties with 1%. Number 14 is Meme Stock and Video Game 
game company Activision Blizzard with 1% and last but not least animal healthcare company Elanco on position number 15 with 0.9%. The top 15 alone make up 68% of Soros total portfolio. So we're not going to go through every single investment of Soros fund management in this video because they have a total of 263 holdings. The rest of the portfolio is filled with smaller positions and companies that make up less than 1% of Soros total portfolio. The 248 remaining companies that we haven't looked at in this video make up 31% of Soros total portfolio. What you can see in this portfolio breakdown is that unlike Buffett for example, Soros doesn't really own stocks that you would hold for decades an EV bet here, a 5G and real estate bet there, it's definitely more speculative than Buffett's portfolio. By the way, if you want to learn more about Buffett's portfolio, then check out the video in the link. Soros is also known to place certain bets in the market. That's how he made the majority of his money. But what do you actually think about Soros portfolio? Is that a portfolio you would invest in? What would you do differently? As always, let me know in the comment section below. I hope that this video could bring some value to you. If you like what you saw and you want to support this channel, and please make sure you subscribe. Thank you very much for doing that and peace.